my balls. Mm -mm. I'm not crying, okay? Don't say that I am. Hair on my face, get off, mate. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video, which is going to be my April beauty roundup where I'm sharing all of my thoughts and updates on everything new that I tried in the month of April. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so first up, Commodity sent me over their exploration kit and look at this whopper. Commodity are now stocked on, I think Sephora, UK now stock them so you can get all of their fragrances there. This discovery kit is so good. I think it's the best one I've ever had from any fragrance company. Their fragrances are organized by like their potency. So this top row is like a close to the body, intimate, personal scent. And then we have like a middle ground row. And then the bottom row are there like beast mode fragrances, but it is the same six fragrances, just with different performances, different amount of projection, strength, power, if you will. So you can, you know, choose your fragrance that you like and the scent that you like, and then decide which strength is for you, depending on, you know, your day. If you're going to the office, you might want something that is closer, more intimate to the skin. If you're going on a day outside or something like that, then you might want something stronger. What I love about this is that it comes with this little booklet with like spaces to write down your thoughts and how you got on and all of the information about each of the scents. I'm just such a nerd. When it comes to like perfume fragrances, that just floated my boat, tickled my pickle. I absolutely lived for the whole experience. Now, my favorite fragrance in the whole bunch is Milk Plus. So this is the most powerful, the strongest version of the milk scent. It's so lovely it's so beautiful which is definitely the fragrance that you guys all told me was your favorite and would be my favorite it's an amber woody scent top notes are marshmallow and milk as the name would suggest in the middle it has some cedar wood and musk and then the base woody notes and amber so it is right up my street i'll say that the opening is super sweet as you would expect with that marshmallow note in there but it's nothing like love by killian it's not super overwhelmingly sweet and cloying and as it dries down it very quickly becomes a really sort of light creamy cozy woodsy scent it's very, very beautiful. I think with that, just the hint of sweetness and lightness from the milk and the marshmallow in the opening, you could probably wear this pretty much year round, probably not in the height of summer, but the rest of the time. There are some really lovely other fragrances in here as well. I think my second favourite, if I had to pick, was probably Paper Plus. Again, the strongest version of the paper fragrance there was some lovely scents in there really beautiful there were a couple that i loved for my husband as well so it was just a really fun little box so thank you so much for to commodity for sending that across because it was just so much fun for me to explore my inner fragrance geek and just play with all of that was a delight but milk is oh, if we are fragrance buddies and you like the type of fragrances that i like milk, you will not dislike milk i think you will love it but the fragrance that i purchased myself this month is from liquid imaginaire and this is blanche bet this was a recommendation from several of you, please let me know. I could never find, I remember seeing this in my comment section, a couple of people telling me about this one when I was looking for a coconut fragrance. This was a couple of people's recommendations. If you were one of those people, thank you so much. It was definitely the best recommendation that I had so far. I've tried a, free, a few different recommendations that people made when I was looking for that coconut fragrance and this is definitely my favorite of the bunch. I have never tried anything from this house either so I was very intrigued. I think the bottle is stunning, so beautiful. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it justice on camera but it's almost got this sort of marbled effect to it. It's so beautiful. I love it. It feels like weighty and expensive as well which I love. The fragrance itself is intriguing because when I was recommended this I went straight on to Fragrantica and Bizarrely enough, coconut is not listed as a note in this fragrance, but literally every review mentions that this is a coconutty perfume and they're not wrong. It definitely has a heady coconut note in there. So th this is a confusing time. It is for sure very different to my usual taste in perfumes. It's not 
those woodsy, ambery, saffrony, very warm, spicy type of fragrance. It's not, it's the complete other end of the spectrum, which is why I wanted to try it because I'm just kind of experimenting. I'm in my fragrance experimentation era, apparently. This again has milk in the top, which is very interesting, ambrette and mystical. Don't even know what that is. That's how mystical it is. Middle notes are essentially floor, like white florals and then in the base, vanilla, musk, cacao and tonka bean. So an interesting little bunch there. In the opening, it's very, very light and fresh and almost a little gourmand. In the dry down, it just becomes a very light, fresh floral with a little bit of vanilla and sweetness creeping through. You definitely can smell the cacao note for sure. You smell a bit chocolatey in that dry down and the coconut pretty much stays there there throughout the length of the fragrance. It starts off pretty potent on me, but I, and it does wear for a very long time. It's definitely a long wearing scent, but I find that throughout the day, it quite quickly becomes a closer and closer, more personal scent. So I don't love its performance. Longevity is there, but I feel like the sillage and the projection is quite limited. And after a couple of hours, only I can smell it. But that is typical of this type of fragrance and it's obviously very very suited to spring and summer months is just what I wanted it for and yeah I can absolutely see myself using this a lot in the warmer months on holiday and things like that when the weather is hotter and that will help the projection and it won't become like too too much because it stays quite light and fresh regardless so yes thank you so much to everyone who recommended this this is exactly what I was looking for like a perfect holiday scent next up these two new shades of OPI nail varnish I picked up data peach and incognito mode and very annoyingly I have neither of these on my nails as we speak which is very annoying I realize but I have worn both of these in my videos so you can see them on if you go through or you've been watching my videos these are from like the latest OPI collection which is all to do with like internet names you know how they are with their names bizarre data peach is such a pretty perfect like peachy metallic finish spring summer delight on the nails very very like shiny and pretty but soft it's not too garish not too loud for this type of color which i really love and then incognito mode as is just completely right up my street it's like a dusky purple almost like a grayish purple so yeah right up my street perfect spring shades for me absolutely loved them and finally for like the non-makeup items I got round to using the Olaplex dry shampoo I've had this for about two months but I've been using up my living proof one and it just lasts forever the large bottle of that one so I have only just tried this in the last week for the first couple of times I can finally tell you how I feel about it this stuff is amazing okay it's amazing I'm so confused by it because the living proof dry shampoo which is my favorite before this one came along and now it's like a bit of a battle I'm still getting to know this one it's still early days it's a massive bottle so that definitely counts in its favor what's confusing about it is there is absolutely zero white residue at all like the living proof one it has a bit of that, you know, when you spray it on, you get that sort of white dust in your hair, but it is very, very easily immediately gone once you sort of work it into the hair or just leave it for a while. It's it's completely gone. It, it's not hard to get rid of it. This one like does not leave any white residue at all. You spray it on and I was like, mm, where is it? Where are you? What's happening? It's invisible. There's nothing there. I'm very confused. And so I sprayed it on and it the first time I used it and thought, well, that's not done anything. And then I sort of, you know, left it for a few minutes and then worked it in. And it had, it literally had worked beautifully, perfectly, just as good as the living proof, but it was invisible. A confusing time. It's magic. If you are afraid of the white cast, you don't want that white residue at all, don't want to deal with it, this is magic. I don't know how it does it. It's It makes it slightly hard to see where you've applied it. That's the only negative I would say. I love the fragrance. You know, everything from Olaplex smells beautiful, but it's just so light. It really did get rid of my greasy roots and just make my hair look very fresh and gave me that body that dry shampoo does so well, but I couldn't see it. I was baffled and befuddled, okay? It was a confusing time, but so far I'm a big fan. Next up, another confusing experience for me. It's been it's been a challenging month, as you can tell. 
I tried this Estee Lauder Daywear Multi-Protection Antioxidant Sheer Tint Release Moisturiser. The reason I emphasise that name is I should have read that before I plastered this all over my face and left the house, okay? I put this on the day that we were going to Chessington for my daughter's birthday, okay? We went to Chessington, we were staying there for a few days. Now, I don't know about you, but if I am going to a theme park with my children, I'm not wearing like a full face of makeup, okay? Typically, it might rain quite a bit. You're outside the entire day. Also, when I go on rides, my eyes like stream. It's the wind, it's the breeze, it's the terror combined it makes my eyes cry, okay? I'm not crying, I just wanna be clear. I'm not crying, okay? Don't say that I am. But my eyes water, they stream when I'm on those rides. So I can't, I don't wanna go with a full face of makeup. I will look ridiculous. And you don't, they take photos of you with no permission on those rides, all right? There are photos and you get forced to keep them because you know, their memories of your, your childhood and your family adventures. So yeah, that's my advice. Just go makeup free or as minimal as possible. So I just wanted to put this because it had SPF 15, bit of SPF, bit of a nice glow to the skin. That's what I thought I was signing up for. Mm. About halfway there, I looked in my <laughs> mirror in, you know, I'm passenger princess. I pulled down my visor, I looked in the mirror and was like, oh. Hmm, this is tinted, okay? This is tinted and it's quite dark. You know, I don't have super fair skin. I'm like a light medium medium, I'm like an NC30 now, if we're talking MAC code. And this had for sure left a tint to my skin and it gets darker. And let me tell you, I had made no effort to blend this in because I didn't know it had a tint. I just applied it like a moisturizer, you know, willy-nilly and went about my day and by the time I saw that it is in fact quite tinted <sighs> you couldn't really leave it it was a streaky crazy mess my face was a totally different color to the rest of my body and my neck and my ears and I looked crazy and there was no getting it off <laughs> it was there but you know it's nothing a quick trip down the log flumes couldn't fix but yeah that is what I will warn you about this stuff it's very nice it smells lovely and fresh and very grassy, if that's a thing. And it gave me a gorgeous glow to the skin. I would have liked more SPF for this type of product, but you know, any any counts. Um, yeah, so I wouldn't suggest using this if you are fair. I mean, you can see it's kind of darkening up there on my hand. I wouldn't suggest using this if you're like fair, light, medium skin tone. This is, I think it only comes in one shade as far as I can understand so I, I'm very confused by it um yeah it might be one that I enjoy more in the summer once I've caught a bit of a tan because <laughs> right now it was not a good look okay it just looked bonkers so that played me like a fool very much hope that nobody saw me that day next up let's talk about this Tom Ford foundation stick this is not new but it is new to me all right so leave it out I'm extremely late to the party, but it's been very, very viral on TikTok recently, thanks to Alex Earl. And I thought, why have I not tried this? I've got both of the other Tom Ford foundations and I love them. I love the Tom Ford primer, it's my holy grail. So I need to try this. The reason I haven't tried it is because you guys know I don't like a stick of any variety, a stick foundation, stick contour, stick blush, I stick men don't like them. So that's why I've never tried it, but the curiosity got the better of me and I thought, you know, I need to try this. I love everything else from the brand when it comes to complexion. And so I tried it this month. I took this when we went to stay with my family for a few days and I will say it's winning when it comes to like being transportable, travel friendly. This is where it's at. It's a very nice little compact number. Obviously, if you are going for like a clean, no makeup, makeup look, you wouldn't even need a brush or a sponge. You could just, you know, swipe it on and tap it in and you'd be good to go. If you're a hands kind of person, you're set. I can't touch anything. I can't have it. Sometimes people say to me, oh, you need to use your hands. Well, then I'm out because I won't and I cannot. I will not have it. I can't touch things, all right? I just, I, don't ask me why, we don't know. But I hate it. So that's out for me. What I found about this, I love the finished look of this. I think it's very skin-like and beautiful. It has a nice, luminous, natural finish. 
It melts into the skin very nicely, very seamlessly. All good things, good things. It wears decently as well. What I don't love about this is just the application process because it's a stick, okay? Wiping it all over my face. I feel like it takes an age to blend it and work it in. I feel like it's literally double the amount of time it would take me with a liquid foundation. I don't know if it's just me, but that's, it just felt like a lot of effort. My arm ached by the time I was finished, you know? So when I can be bothered, great, great for travel. I understand great for touch-ups if you wanted to carry this around in your handbag, touch up throughout the day, great, great, great. But I just felt like it was a lot of work compared to my other foundations. But I did like how it looked at the end of the day. A mixed bag. Next, let's talk about this quad from Tom Ford. This is Hazy Sensuality. It suits you, sir. Now, I thought I was done with Tom Ford quads because I've just kind of decided they're obviously not for me as a brand when it comes to eyeshadow. Everything is just so soft and understated and lacking of pigment in my book. So I just kind of feel like I'm done with the brand. It's not really for me. And then I saw this little number pop up and it just looks so pretty. And it is, it's right up my street with these types of colors. And I thought, okay, I'll give it one last try. And I have this on my eyes, peepers, my balls. <laughs> Mm -mm, my eyeballs today. So yeah, I love it. I think it's my favorite ever Tom Ford quad. It's so easy to use. There are no mats in here, you've been warned. These are all like varying levels of shimmer. And I use this shade wet with um, a bit of Fix Plus towards the inner part of my eye today. And I just thought it was so pretty. And yes, it is still understated and more muted if you're talking Pat McGrath, Natasha Denona. This is not going to achieve that level of impact, but it's so pretty and I love it. I've been using it a lot and I've been really enjoying how it looks just for daytime, softer, flattering, grown up eyeshadow. It's so beautiful, so pretty, so easy going. I think it's like literally sold out everywhere. I think it sold out very, very quickly, probably because it was just such a pretty wearable color story. Lots of people like myself were very excited to see something that was not very very warm toned and oranges from Tom Ford so we all bought it immediately but if you can get your mitts on it it's my favorite Tom Ford quad I've ever tried I mean it didn't have a lot of competition but st still next up I picked this highlighter up from the was it the spring summer collection from Dior this is the coral cruise shade limited edition of their highlighter. I was nervous because it's called Coral Cl Cruise. Clues, clues, blues, clues? Anyone? I was unsure how much pigment we were gonna be talking about. Was it gonna be more of a blush? Was it gonna leave a cast? It's so pretty, the shade of this. Now I've just slightly blended that and you can see it's it's very nice, my skin tone. I have this highlighter on today. Very, very pretty, very, very wearable. Doesn't leave me any kind of cast that kind of stands out on my skin or gives me much color. If you are very fair, it might do. I don't think this is going to like sort of quite act as a blush on anybody. I don't think it's got enough pigment, even on a fairer skin tone to give you much of a blush, but Oh, she's so pretty, very smooth, very flattering, very easy to use and gorgeous to look at, I will say that. So yeah, I really like that one. I don't think it's like, you know, a new holy grail if you missed out on it or if you're, you know, trying to cut back on makeup spending. It's not like a top three highlighter. So I do like it. I do enjoy it, but I don't think anyone needs to panic by it. It's not like crazy different or crazy special. It is that same formula from Dior that they have their existing permanent shades in. So no need to panic by it, but I did enjoy it. Next, let's talk about Venusian Sunrise from Pat McGrath. She, she does not want to stay open. This is the quad from from the bronzer collection. She finally arrived this week and I was excited. I've waited many years to meet her and she's finally here. I've used this a couple of times. I don't wanna say that I'm disappointed because I like it a lot and I think the overall look that I get with it, I do really like. It's just, 
it's just not quite as sort of special or exciting as I expected it to be. And I know obviously it's it's basically a neutral quad of shadows. So how exciting did I think it was going to be? I don't know, I've lost my marbles. But I'm a neutral lover and I'm a Pat McGrath lover. So I did think this would be like my favorite quad of all time. And I like it, I, I'm not, a, I think what it is, if I get to the bones of the matter, is this shade, which I guess is like the exciting shade, is just not my cup of tea. It's that really warm like copper, again, that Pat McGrath just puts in every single one of her palettes. And I feel like if there was another more, like if this had been more like this color or like a darker version and we'd had something resembling the Natasha Denona color story from her glam face palette that I'm obsessed with, oof, oof suits you sir it would have been my favorite quad of all time this shade I just don't really want to use it so then I use these three and these mattes are perfect okay they're the perfect combination a warmer lighter brown and then a cooler tone perfect what I want for my everyday like neutral glam looks but then I've only got this one as an option because I don't really love the tone of this. So it just, ah, uh, it was very, very close, but not quite what I was wanting. And I think, I think at first I thought, oh, it's exactly like Venus in Flares, but it's not, it is quite different to Venus in Flares. But I think I prefer that one. Ve You're annoying me. I think I prefer Venus in Flares. I just think that one is a little more special because I prefer the shimmer shades in there and I love every shade in that palette. If only I could take this one out and put the Venus in Flares shimmer metallic in here instead. Oh, because I do prefer the tones of the mattes in here. So yeah, <laughs> just close, close to perfection. Still a very nice palette. I still like the look that I came out with when I tried this a couple of times. Really, really happy with the performance of everything. Just for my taste and personally what I was hoping for, it kind of slightly missed the mark, but still a lovely little quad. And now these bronzers. So I picked up three shades and I've made sure to use all three of them independently and give them each a little chance so I can tell you my full true feelings on each of the shades. So I have Nude Honey, I have Bronze Nirvana, which is this one, and Desert Glow, which is I think the one that I thought would be my favorite because it is the luminous finish shade. So as you can see, Nude Honey, much lighter than the other two, Bronze Nirvana, Desert Glow. Nude Honey, also the only neutral toned blush in the whole collection. The other two are definitely both very warm, but as you can see, have very different undertones. Desert Glow is a more sort of reddish brown, and then Bronze Nirvana is very much a classic warm toned bronzer. I will say Desert Glow, the difference in finish is minute, like looking on my hand, yes, it has some luminosity, but it's it's not a glowy bronzer by any means. Now, my favorite by a million miles is Nude Honey. I absolutely love the tone of this. It looks so natural. All of these bronzers have a really nice buildable finish and a buildable amount of pigment, so you can really build them up as much or as little as you'd like, which I really like rather than going in very heavy handed and then having a nightmare trying to blend it out. They're very soft, very buildable, very smooth and flattering on the skin. They really melt beautifully into the skin. I love the formula, but the other two shades are just off. For me, whether they're too warm or too deep, this one is absolutely perfect. I was really worried it would be too light for me, but it builds so beautifully and so easily that I can absolutely use this. I'm not sure about in summer, but in winter, this is one of my favorite ever bronzers just because the shade and the undertone is so perfect and it's so easy to work with. So this was a big hit. Not that these were like a flop or a fail because the formula is good, but I just don't love the colors, or the undertones of them. Next, let's talk about what is on my lips today and it's these Tom Ford liquid mattes. I picked up two shades, Lark, which is quite a rich, neutral, almost 90s 
nude and then we have smitten which is the shade that i'm wearing today so i wore lark in my trying new makeup video so today you get to see smitten on my lips i love this shade it kind of reminds me slightly of lisa aldridge's cinnabar it's kind of in that small same ballpark and actually i made such a hash of my lipstick application today that i used the cinnabar liner to just like tidy up the edges and they work beautifully cinnabar was a little darker a little richer but a beautiful shade i love these lipsticks you can see these off this is fully dried down and you can see it does give a slight bit of transfer but that also affords you a slight bit of comfort when it comes to a dry down liquid matte that's what i like i like a bit of give to the formula because if there was no transfer there that's when you know you've got the dry down paint life sucking formula whereas these just have that little bit of give which gives you that little bit of comfort throughout the day they don't get as dry there's no like flaking of your lips but it won't be completely transfer free if you have a drink or anything like that it will transfer they wear really well but they are not fully bulletproof three course dinner and drinks proof but at the same time they do fade very naturally and very easily without leaving just like a patchy mess or like a missing ring around your mouth they just kind of fade throughout the day so i really like these the packaging is stunning as with tom ford always smash their packaging so yeah i really like these they are like i said in my get ready with me my favorite ever actual dry down matte liquid lipstick because they are more comfortable they wear just as nicely but without making me regret my life decisions i'm still not a liquid matte kind of girl but if i was forced on my deathbed to wear one i don't know why that would happen but if it did i would choose these because they are the ones that have given my lips the least amount of like torture next up the fenty beauty mascara I feel it's harsh and brutal and maybe inaccurate to say that this is a fail because it's not, but I was disappointed with it. I really had such high hopes for this mascara. I love the packaging, but it does feel so lightweight. Like it's barely like there's anything in my hand. It feels very light, but it looks pretty sexy as far as mascara packaging goes. The packaging for sure tickles my pickle, floats my boat. I thought this would be a big hit because it's got that really bristly brush that I'm getting along with really nicely right now, but it's skinny and long. So it kind of like gets every last lash and I really like the shape and size of the wand, but it is that full fat clumpy looking lash effect, which I do love, but it needs to be like easy to achieve and it needs to be easy to apply and to get all of the actual clumps and lumps out. And I feel like this one takes a lot of work. Like my, my sort of favorite big fat lash mascaras, Mac Stack, the Pat McGrath Dark, Dark Star. I always want to say Dark Horse dark star there's no horses involved i love the bite beauty one before that was no more you know long commissure big back in the day was my holy grail for uh, many years so those are my like favorite full fat lash mascaras and i feel like i get that full fat chunky chunky looking lashes with like no effort this one i feel like i'm kind of combing clumps out and lumps out and try and reposition and stop my lashes sticking together too much and it's a bit of work the end result looks fab big fat voluminous lashes great but it it took some effort to get there and i cannot use this on my lower lashes because it's just too way too much there and i find it really hard to apply lightly on my lower lashes without it going berserk it does wear nicely no flaking no smudging or transferring throughout the day and it is moderately easy like averagely easy to remove so there are some pluses but i just found like for the finished article the finished effect I have mascaras that are easier to get there than that one. Next, let's talk about these Armani blushes. I'm wearing one today. This is the shade 10. Very, very soft, subtle, barely there. Touch of something on me. And then I also picked up the shade 50. These are, is anyone else really baffled by these? These befuddled me this month, okay? They were a confusing little launch. I saw swatches of like, I don't know, 10 shades of this online and like, I think six 
ever appeared here. I think the US have got even less than we did, which is unusual. They still to this day are not on the Armani Beauty website. They sold out really quickly. And it was just a really confusing time. I planned to pick up shade 10, 11, which just never came anywhere. Like it's just like a myth. I've seen a swatch of it. There's an image with a number 11 blush right there, but no one's ever seen it. It's like an urban legend of a blush. And then there's the fact that these are called the Luminous Silk Glow Blushes. Yet number 10 is matte, I think. I, I really feel like there's no real glow to number 10. And then, and then, yen, and then number 50 is like super glowy, what the name would suggest. So there are like massive differences between the finishes of these, but nowhere is that like described or clear for anybody to know which shades are glowy and which shades are matte. They're just like, they're called the same thing and they're advertised in the same way, but they have completely different formulas. So it, the whole launch has been a slightly confusing little mess, you know? So this is shade 10, this is shade 50, and I imagine you can probably see the difference in the finishes. 50 is that stunning, super glowy finish, and then number 10 is, you know, maybe it would qualify as like a satin, or a natural finish, but really no glow whatsoever. And certainly not when you compare it to shade 50, like those are not the same. Now I built those up quite heavily and I had to build shade 10 up very heavily to even get like anything from it on my skin tone. So I feel like 11, the mysterious mystery shade would have been the perfect shade for me, but who knows if we're ever going to be able to buy that one. Now what I'll say about this, apparently number 50 is like, NARS Orgasm. It's a very close, smoother, less sparkly version of NARS's Orgasm. I would say that number 10 also reminds me very much of Laura Mercier's Bellini, but I prefer Bellini because it's just got a bit more colour to it, a bit more payoff, and it shows easier on my skin tone without me using as much, and it's a lot cheaper as well. These also are very small, as lots of people have pointed out, and not only are they small, they have a small amount of product, 3.6 grams an average blush is like six so it's like half your average size blush for you know a big price point and for me they're nice they're fine but they never made it into my top drawer okay so that says something they are just a very average decent nice ish blush they didn't wow me they didn't amaze me none of the colors are like a holy grail or something i don't really own before the finish of 50 is really really pretty but of 10 is again very average they don't really stand out in my collection i am a big blush lover and i have a lot of blushes nars laura mercier chanel pat mcgrath blushes dior blushes i prefer all of those to these they just feel more special to me and I love them more these are just like very average I feel like and they're you know they're expensive to be average so I think these are absolutely skippable passable I see me using them a couple of times and then them kind of just disappearing into a drawer because they just don't stand out to me and lastly let's talk about this hourglass palette this is the diffused rose edit i reviewed this i did a standalone review and demo of this i've used this a few times now i really like it as i said in my review it is very samey if you have a lot of hourglass products palettes like this these and the six pans they release for holiday you absolutely already own something that can achieve this you know diffused light is a permanent shade the rose flush blush is for sure the star of the show but it is very similar to what we already have from elephant and the tiger palettes as i showed in my review and then the highlight i really like it's quite smooth glowy luminous without much base so it really is very pretty and very sort of sheer but beautiful on the skin so i really like it i think it's beautiful but i do think if you have a lot of hourglass it probably is quite unnecessary um if you don't i think it's a great first try of these products and these powders really only going to work for someone up to like an nc30 the blush i think would work on pretty much anyone because it has a lot of pigment and it's very buildable you can certainly get you know a nice 
rich amount of pigment out of it but you know the other powders are only going to work up to like an NC 30 35 so whether or not you want to buy that just for the blush which again it's very similar to lots of other hourglass blushes you know is up to you but it is a beautiful blush it's a perfect little spring palette but it is expensive so if you have a lot of hourglass I think you can absolutely save your money okay and there you have it that is everything that I tried in the month of April a very mixed bag some real wins and some like real mm, I wish they'd been better moments you know please let me know what you tried what was new to you in the month of April tell me your favorite product that you tried this month did you pick up any of these products how did you get on with them please tell me what your makeup month has looked like in the comment section down below but I hope you enjoyed this video and I would love to see you in the next one otherwise take care for now bye 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 bye, bye.